girls and young women now, the doors are open and uh, Title IX has made a tremendous difference. Marking a milestone. A 50 a years since Title IX nurse, changed the game for women in Take the United States and the in Indiana Texas. Connection. The number one contribution to Title IX is giving women the intellectual capacity to provide for themselves and their families. The that late Indiana real Senator real Birch Bayh. His that vision, passion, and country. persistence on creating an equal playing race. field for I women. Join us for a special look back at the impact of Title IX. Next, on the second half hour of Inside Indiana Business. And we do begin the second half hour of our show, shining the spotlight on landmark legislation. Title IX signed into law 50 years ago this week. It led to the explosive growth of women's sports and really leveled the playing field for women to pursue higher education as well. Before Title IX passed in 1972, there were fewer than 300,000 girls participating in high school sports today. Three and a half million involved in high school athletics. For a deeper dive in reaction uh, to Title IX in this uh, landmark uh, uh, occasion, I'm pleased to be joined by Indiana Fever executive uh, Allison Barber, also Tamika Catchings, the owner of Tease Me uh, Cafe, co founder of Catch the Stars Foundation. She's also the co chair of the uh, 2024 NBA All Star Board of Directors and, of course, uh, a Hall of Famer as well. So, ladies, thanks for joining me. Thank you. Thank you. And I know we went through the uh, hoops here. Allison, you're in Washington, D.C. In fact, I think you're in the Washington Mystics uh, uh, offices uh, as your flight was delayed to get back. So really glad you joined us. Uh, Tamika, you're here uh, in Indianapolis. And, and Tamika, I'll start with you because uh, this is a big week marking uh, Title IX, but also uh, Catch 98, which is a documentary being released uh, on the SEC network. It's debuting this week. Let's run a little clip of that, uh, of that uh, special that's going to begin airing this week right now. Me be the best women's basketball player in the history of the game. Another steal. Catchings delivers. She was always the girl that got chose before a lot of the boys. She was just that good. Let me tell you a story. I knew that there was something very special about her. About when greatness chases perfection. You are seeing a clinic in basketball. That is a uh, piece on the undefeated 97-98 Tennessee team. 39-0. What do you remember about that? And the fact that without Title IX, none of that would have happened. Well, that's exactly what it is, Jerry. Without Title IX, that would not have happened, and we wouldn't have had the opportunity to play. And for myself, being able to compete for a national championship, and so definitely so blessed, blessed to be a part of that team in particular, being able to get sweet. We, that was history. Uh -huh. And early on, before social media got here, before all the opportunities that we have now, that was just the beginning. Yeah, and, and I know um, you've been on uh, Twitter, social media, talking with other athletes around the SEC. What's kind of the the, 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 the vibe, the, the the talk right now, uh, marking this uh, occasion 50 years ago for uh, for Title IX? What, uh, what what are folks saying? Well, the biggest thing is the opportunity, and you know the athletes that I'm getting the opportunity to now be alongside. They're still in college, mm -hmm. so the NIL and mm -hmm. being able to kind of navigate the land that they're in, things that we didn't have to, I didn't have to navigate NIL, I didn't have to navigate social media. So it's a totally different world, but because of Title IX, because of the fair opportunity, because of equity, now these young ladies are being able to experience a lot of the things that we didn't get the chance to experience. Yeah. Allison, as I mentioned, you're in D.C. You were there for uh, a big event this week marking a Title IX. Tell us about that, uh, that event and some of your big takeaways from the celebration uh, out in D.C. this week. Well, Gary, the Billie Jean King, the First Lady, were at, uh, with us at an event yesterday honoring Title IX and then also women from around the world who have taken the theme of Title IX and used sports to advance society in many countries, um, over 60-some countries. But what was really special as a Hoosier was to hear Billie Jean King talking about her admiration and friendship with Senator Birch Bay. And, you know, we talk about Title IX, it's 37 words, but in that line, she said that Senator Bai said, they wrote the word that said no person should be uh, subjected to discrimination 
under any education program or activity. Mm -hmm. She said the first five said they put an activity as a catch-all in case they forgot anything. And every time she would see him, she would praise him for the word activity because that's what opened the door to sports. Yeah. Originally, Title IX was about opportunity to education, but by including activity, as Senator Bai did and Patsy Mink from Hawaii, they opened the door for sports. And you know, it was special to be here and celebrate the vision that people had, our own Senator Bai and many others to pursue it. And what Billie Jean says is that you know we need to respect it and protect it. There's so much more to do in this space, but we've come a very long way. And it's exciting to see it's great for our fever players. Gary, you talked about the number of girls who play sports. How about the fact that before Title IX, only 10% of females had held doctorate degrees, mm -hmm. and now 54% in one of our own players, Kelsey Mitchell, is pursuing her doctorate degree. Mm -hmm. Or Lexi Hall on our fever team has her bachelor's and master's in science and engineering. Yeah. At, from Stanford. So education and sports, it's, it's a wonderful opportunity because of Title IX. And you're one of those people with, with a doctorate. And again, something that would likely not have happened without that, this uh, legislation. Gary, that's right. You know, Birch Bayou was so passionate because his wife got turned down to mm -hmm. medical school. Right. And so, you know, this is it's not that long ago. And now we know, according to Ernst & Young, 96% of female executives, C-suite executives, played sports. So what a great pathway. And I, I can't help but share this story. It's a big story about how female executives played sports. But this week in one of our basketball camps, a mother came up to us and said that her daughter had three near-death experiences and, a doc and two broken legs. It was dramatic for her, but she caught onto the game of basketball and was so inspired by it, wanted to play, and her coach said she could never play. She determined to play. She lost 47 pounds, and she's on two basketball teams. And so I say that's why. That's Title IX at work. And that's why Tamika and I are so passionate about protecting and promoting right. the game of basketball. Yeah. Uh, Tamika, Allison mentioned uh, work still needs to be done. And I, I thought back to, I think it was a couple of years ago, uh, the, the, the visuals of the, of the uh, women's Final Four uh, weight area uh, at the Final Four versus the guys. And those, th th that was something that kind of stood out. As you look at going forward and maintaining or improving or continuing to enhance uh, this whole thing, is there, is there work to be done? Uh, what needs to be done in your view? Yeah, there's definitely work to be done. And I think you look at that, that was an unfortunate situation that happened. And obviously last year, the NCAA definitely stepped up and was able to come through. But it's stories like that. And you think about social media and the power of social media and what can happen. Our mm -hmm. job and really what we're fighting for, especially with the WNBA and the collegiate game and, and so forth, I don't want those situations to happen. We want there to be equity across the board. We want to make sure that our young ladies are getting served just like the men are. And it's terrible that we have to keep comparing the mm -hmm. men to the women, but it is what it is until there is total equality for all. And I think that's one situation, but even as we continue, just being able to have access. Mm -hmm. I think that when you look at the coverage for women's sports in general, and you know, of course I always talk about basketball, but when you look at the coverage for women's sports overall, that's an area that mm -hmm. we definitely need to continue to improve the support, viewership, sponsorship, partnership. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can go on and on talking about this just because I've been, mm -hmm. Alice and I have been in the foxhole trying to figure out ways to continue to grow the fever here in Indiana, but this is definitely not just Indiana fever. This is across the board, women's sports being able to provide more access for all of our young ladies. All right, uh, Allison, we've only got 30 seconds left. Tamika, uh, no better example of a role model. Uh, talk about that, if you could, just briefly, in, in terms of the impact of role models that have been generated because of Title IX and, and the, the girls and women who served as, as role models for other girls and women. Well, for me, I mean, my role models growing up, my mom was my first role model, my grandmother, my mother. But then when I looked at sports, Daly, Lisa Leslie, and Cheryl Swoop because of what they represented, not only as strong women, but for me, strong African-American women yeah. playing in the Olympics and being able to represent our country. Those were my heroes. Yeah. Uh, Allison, I'll give you the final word on role models and the impact. I will say, you know, I look at our own state, Sue Elsperman, Pamela Whitten, Dale Boudreaux, women who played sports or have been affected by education to succeed in so many ways. But I can't end this without a little... To, to Tamika and, and Pat Summit, Tamika said it is what it is, and Pat Summit used to say it is what it is until it is what we make it. 
Mm. And that's what we're busy doing is making it better for girls and the future of women in sports and, and society. A great way to end the conversation. Great perspective. Uh, Allison Barber, uh, CEO, President of the Indiana Fever, Hall of Famer, Tamika Ketchings. Thank you both, and thanks for all you do for Indiana as well. Thank you. Thank you, Gary.